So how do we use iView's toolkit to make custom couples poses for rooms? So first, obviously, make sure you have your nodes set up for custom poses. So they have the appends, the custom named or custom labels appended to the seat node. Make a note of the names of each of the nodes. And then what we want to do using the toolkit so we're going to use a toolkit for this. Create a new project. Make sure nothing is selected. Toolkit. Animation tool. Append animation file. Just get that into place. So this brings in the pose tool, the skeleton that we use to create our poses. Then file. Append. What we're going to do is append some references that we can use to create our pose around. So browse to open the file or the project where the room is that contains all the seat nodes. We want the object folder and then we want the mesh. Click select and then we want all the seat nodes that we're going to bring in for the poses. So in this case it's this lot. Select, then in the outliner, make sure, and this is important, to select and highlight the scene collection. We can do this even though the file browser is open. So make sure that is highlighted. So let's just collapse this to make this easier to see. Because what this will do when we click append is drop all the contents into the scene collection outside the pose tool components. This is very important. And all we need to do to set up the scene so that we can create our poses. So we've brought in just the seat nodes and the mesh. Those are our reference objects. We're in pose mode, which is the default state of the tool. So we can select bones of the rig. So what we want to do Pose mode, object mode. So that'll change the avatar's appearance. So it'll be outlined in orange now. So it's in object mode. Then all we do is select all our nodes, our mesh. So the mesh highlight the node that we're going to create the pose for. So shift click and then parent all of those together. So parent object make parent keep transform. So this is important as well. Keep transform. So that's stops or prevents the nodes from shifting their position, relatively speaking. So once we've got that, what we should find, so there are all our nodes and the mesh, what we should find, to double check, highlight the node that we have set up as the parent, press the G key, and if we move this, everything should move with it. Once we've got that or confirmed that, so again, if we look at the outliner, we are still inside the scene collection and outside the tools components. So once we've got that, switch to item. Or we could use object properties and the location. Set this to zero, zero, zero. And if rotation is set, zero that as well. In this case, it's not, but let's just do that anyway. Zero, zero, zero. We can then focus on what is now the target node. Frame selected. And then create our pose around it. Once the first pose has been created, what we want to do then, we've exported this, so it's dropped us back into object mode, which we need to be in. So object mode from pose mode. What we want to do is select 
the mesh sections of the avatar that we will then use as a reference point for the second pose. So we select object, duplicate objects. So object, duplicate objects. This will create a copy of those selected elements, which will be still linked to the rig and the basic setup of the animation tool. So just press escape to reset. We want to move those into the scene collection. So we're moving them from inside the animation tool, which is where they currently are. Here, we want to move them from mesh into the main scene collection. And we do that by object, collection, move to collection. The shortcut key is M, M for Marty. So object, collection, move to collection. The pop-up will appear and we just want to select scene collection. So this is the main scene collection that's in the outliner. And what we end up with are our objects moved from the animation components. So what we can then do, make sure one of these is selected or highlighted, so shift click, and then join object, join. That joins everything together into a single object and it's still attached to the armature. So what we want to do next, modifiers, and here we want to click on the more options down arrow and click on apply. So we want to fix this pose to the mesh. So apply. That collapses the armature so we can now move our object independently of the pose. So what we've basically done is Pose the character using the animation tool, exported it, that's dropped us back into object mode automatically, but we can change that at the top there. Selected the mesh components of the tool, the avatar tool, duplicated them, and then created a second mesh that's locked or frozen the pose in the mesh. So that's step two. So step one is bringing all the components in and creating the pose, the first pose. Second step is creating a mesh duplicate of the pose and fixing the position of the armature into the mesh. And then the third step is to reorganize the scene so that our focus becomes the new node that we want as our parent object or our target object. So for that, we need to Make sure we have our duplicate selected. Shift click the target node that's active at the moment and parent that to it. So we're parenting the mesh to that node. So parent, object, parent, object. Keep transform. So again, if we select that node, press the G key, we now have our reference pose fixed to that node as a reference. So it will move with that node. So once we've got that done, we have to select all the nodes and mesh and undo the parenting. So unparent, so object, parent, clear parent, and keep transform. Again, the keep transform is important. It prevents all the nodes from reorganizing themselves. So object, parent, clear, and keep transform. Keep them all selected. So that's just disconnected the relationship. Select the target node that we were just using. 
and then shift click on the new target node and object parent object so we're basically shifting the parenting and the targeting of the group of nodes so what we should find now is if we select the new target everything else moves including the avatar pose that we fix to the mesh so now that we've done that item reposition this so that that is now the focus of the pose tool select the pose tool switch back into pose mode in the tool itself what we want to do is just the zero the pose so we're resetting the pose so make sure timeline slider or scrubber is at frame one and then just click the button that resets the pose alt click that selects this row delete this row of keyframe markers that we no longer need because those are associated with the old pose change the name of the action so we know which one we're working with and save the file and create the second pose using the mesh as our reference so there is our second pose relative to the original mesh or the first pose mesh and that's how we basically create couples poses so all we need to do is double check that we save this file save make sure our static pose options are set so make pose export all bones and then just export and that creates our second pose that we can now assemble alongside the first one in studio so in studio we create our new actions and then import our fbx file import fbx browse to our file location select the fbx import review reset the armature and component because we've imported a new skeleton so asset skeleton room preview actions create new ensemble load in the file set the duration one two zero apply preview There's pose one. Import second one. Same again. reset the skeleton because again we brought in a file with a skeleton 
It's a skeleton. Actions, select the action. New ensemble. New file. One, two, zero for infinite loops. Apply, preview. And then we should find the second pose is also in place. And what we can now do is use the avatars feature to add another avatar. And there is our pose, our couples pose. So that's how you do couples poses using the toolkit. Let's make sure that they're both the same size so we get a better sense of the pose. So that's how you use the toolkit in Blender to create a couple's pose.